Well, um, welcome everyone. Um, I'm really excited. Um, back in 2017, I produced this conference as, as some of you guys heard of. <laughs> um, and Stacy and Janelle were kind enough to come join my program um, about four years ago. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to have uh, Janelle and Stacy, who are really incredible thought leaders, come back and visit our, the, um, the Actors Conference. And just to give you guys a quick story um, of the both of them, um, Janelle's the founder and the CEO of Janelle Diane, AKA JD. Um, she's an executive brand strategist. She's a speaker, she's a story author, and she wrote the book, Story, Style, and Brand, which is out on Amazon. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a number one seller on Amazon. It's a hot release. It's, it was released sometime last year. Um, and if any of you guys are interested in reading it, it's in the Actors Conference Library. And come check it out anytime. Um, she explores, explores the power of storytelling, which is I, just essential in utilizing um, social media and how we become master storytellers through that. Um, Janelle has developed JD, a methodology that she uses, and it's a proven method that provides corporations and individuals the ability to establish a brand that begins with trust and gives us an ability to control the conversation by asking, what story do we want to tell? So this is what we're going to explore. What story would, would any of us want to tell when utilizing our social media platforms? So Janelle is featured as a contributor on Business Insider, CEO World, and Parade, as well as a guest speaker on several podcasts, including ours. <laughs> She's an advisor to leaders at Salesforce, Facebook, LinkedIn, and her work has been seen by millions at events like the Oscars. Um, so this is really great to have her here. New York Fashion Week, again, um, <laughs> kudos to her. Um, Forbes and the Most Powerful Women and the United Nations. And Janelle and I first met when our kids went to elementary school. They were in kindergarten together. And, you know, the funny thing is in, it was during a class field trip that we started just kind of chit chatting and that's when she had launched her company. And, you know, I, I kept on picking her brain about what she was doing and what work she was building. And so um, with all these executive leaders, she helps to build their personal brand in cooperation with the, the corporation that she, they worked at. So when I was developing the actors conference and um, working with my friend Yvette, Irvin, who was uh, moderating a panel of, um, it was basically social media. And I, of course, I didn't really have a whole big concept on that. I just gave to her and she took, off, took it with and ran with it. Um, and she had invited me to a bunch of different uh, conferences to accompany her. Well, anyway, going back to talking about Janelle, we, I was trying to put this panel together with Yvette and I go, oh, this is brilliant. Janelle works with women and she's right here and she's an expert. So I asked her if she would join us on that panel and she said, sure. So I was like, yes, um, I believe she was the first person on the panel. And um, that same year when Yvette, our moderator that year had, um, we had gone to a conference in San Francisco it was um, about all the social media platforms that were new and about and, um, I went in there to help her uh, document the, the conference. And at the table was Stacy. And Stacy was so full of light and energy, I just couldn't stop talking with her. And like in an instant, we had connected. And I, and I told you that, I go, do you think she'd come on our panel? And, and she goes, just ask her. <laughs> so like, I think a few days later, I, I emailed you. I don't know how I even got your card, but I emailed you and I asked you if you would be a part of it. And so at the time, Stacy was a social media um, brand advocacy manager for GoDaddy. And so um, I felt like I scored when I got these two on the branding panel. Uh, what, what, what was social, a social media panel turned out to be how to create your voice, which you know, was more about branding and, and led to that. So I'm really excited to have them back. Um, uh, Stacy now runs her own social media strategy firm and she helps brands thrive on social media marketing. So she believes in brand advocacy around shared values and she consults with brands in, in the customer experience. So advising them on how to leverage social media to lead to a better understanding of their customers and their clients and in turn increasing the market share and all these other things. You know, this is just great for companies and we're trying to figure out how to uh, make this work for individuals. So she creates all the success and, and 
um, satisfaction for these big companies and why can't we understand this on a micro level for us. Um, she also manages brand advocacy campaigns for companies large and small. She's an author uh, or and for authors and, and artists such as you and I and nonprofits. So I believe that's where her heart is. Um, she works with the companies such as, or she used to, at, such as Ancestry.com, Anytime Fitness, Intuit, Rubio's, you know, I mean, there's some big names there. And I'm really, like I said, delighted to have both Janelle and Stacy back for this opportunity to have this conversation around utilizing storytelling, because that's what, who, that's a human nature is to storytell. But for us, we are, we are professional storytellers. And so I want to be able to narrow that down and be able to help you guys create a narrative that you desire to tell. So um, in, I don't know, the last four years since 2017, I've learned and I've witnessed some really positive outcomes from friends that had taken information from that conference and they've taken opportunities um, and more opportunities has come as, from creating a personal brand. And there was some really key information that was laid down, um, but the through line was storytelling. And I see a lot of, like I said, friends in the industry that have really learned to hone in on that. And they're, you know, they're, they have many more followers, they develop better content, and it's just been serving them really well as professionals. So um, uh, anyway, um, I'd really like to get started. Um, what I have here is, uh, like I said earlier, these two ladies I've connected in an instant. Um, and they are master storytellers. And I think by listening to how they actually got into the position of becoming a, a brand strategist, um, their personal stories would help us to figure out what our personal stories and what we can pick and choose to move forward and lead onto um, our platforms, our social media pages. Um, and maybe we can take some of this information as examples and just break it down and learn. So um, anyway, I'm gonna turn it over to Stacy. And um, why don't you start by telling us your story because <laughs> I, I pulled a lot of information off the internet that I didn't know. And I just thought, oh my gosh, your heart. Um, it just, it shows, your passion shows through everything that you do. So, um, well, why thank you, start you. With your story. Um, well, um, thank you so much, Rosie. First of all, I'm starting mask on. Um, and I know that you all know what this is like to wear masks because here we are in this crazy new reality that none of us could have imagined. Um, but this is part of my brand. I really am passionate about participating in the collective effort to get through this crisis together. So I'm a big mask on person. But with that said, I'll take it off because none of you are close to me. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me a little better now. That is one of the challenges, right, of wearing these masks is it's, it's really hard to hear each other. How's my audio? Do you guys hear me okay? Perfect. Great. Okay. Well, let me get started. Um, I'm just so delighted to be here. This is my first live video in a long time. And I, I wanted to start with the mask to say that part of what I've been doing um, and, and that I, I want to share with you is, is really just being conscious of the context that we all find ourselves in. And I've been doing a lot more listening than speaking in the last few months. So really just going inward, um, not just staying in my home like most of us, but going inward personally. And uh, that is a very unusual place for me to be because as you noted, when you first met me at the social media conference, uh, I'm a very passionate person about everything that I do. And it's really rare for me to be silent, but I have been for some time. And I think that that's a, a worthwhile thing to do. I started out uh, on this journey that led me to being a brand advocacy specialist and a social media manager um, in a very unlikely place as a grassroots organizer. So the first part of my life after college, I was running an environmental coalition for endangered species and uh, worked with the Rainforest Action Network, the Sierra Club, Wilderness Society, um, all those big environmental groups in a coalition fashion. And it was, it was really just before then that I, I fell in love with the idea of social media. Um, many of the campaigns I ran as a grassroots organizer, I just realized the diminishing power that we had as voters. And I realized that one day in the future, we would be in the world that we find ourselves in today. I didn't quite imagine the masks and the COVID, 
but I did see that the currency that we were developing in these social networks that were really early on uh, would one day be this currency that drove change in the world. So I primarily, my story is I'm an agent of change. I really believe that um, this planet is one that we need to leave for future generations. And what I saw way back long ago as a grassroots organizer is if we didn't get serious about forming a movement to save the planet, we wouldn't have any place to live. And so I'm, I'm very passionate about that. And I realized uh, early on that the campaigns we were running, and it was actually a campaign to get Home Depot to stop selling old growth redwood. And it was a pivotal moment for me because while we had been in Washington and in Sacramento trying to regulate these industries and get them to stop selling old growth redwood, there were only 1% of the old redwood trees left in the whole world, and they were still logging them with wild abandon back in the 90s. Um, that was very difficult to do, and they had a lot more money than we did, and they would beat us every turn of the way until we started going to the consumers of the redwood hot tubs that lived in Marin, and most of them were very much interested in saving the environment. They had no idea that the redwood hot tubs they were putting in were harming the environment. So I learned quickly that a tribe of customers would be much more influential directly on that company than regulating them in Sacramento and Washington. So that's how I ended up going into brand advocacy. Fast forward to many years later, I um, ended up working in some of the very first jobs in corporate social media, because I was fascinated by the idea that we could build our brands online and have this direct platform to the universe. Instead of having to go through auditions and become an actor, um, we could just uh, pop on a screen and early days it was all text, but now it's video and really have our own channels. And that's the world we find ourselves in today. In fact, right now, companies all over the world pay people like me to understand what is the vibe of their tribe? What do their customers really value? And what do they want you to stand for? Everything's become a commodity. And so what we have today is that brands that show up and take a stand for issues and not just getting political on everything, but just really standing for something, that is a really strong appeal that brings customers into your fold. So I think as an actor, if you really think about it now, um, similarly, people that are looking to hire you wanna know what you're really about. They don't wanna see some polished view that you've presented for them. They kinda of wanna know who you really are. So I, I really, I think it's an opportunity both for large brands and their employees. So I, I ended up working at GoDaddy in their social media department and also managing what's called an employee advocacy program. So what they found is that by letting the individual stories of their employees shine, it gave a whole new wave of color to the tribe that is this giant company. Um, and so a lot of companies are starting to do this. So whether you're looking to get hired by one of these companies or form your own brand, either way, your personal story, what you stand for, and who you really are, that story that you create for yourself online has a huge impact on um, the influence that you have, either personally, professionally, or politically, um, and then also, you know, who you attract around you. Birds of a feather flock together. So, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed a lot of pivots in my career, and I think that the moment that we're in now with the unprecedented changes that we're all going through and the ability to connect directly with audiences, just like we're doing here, really gives you the opportunity to create something that we've never seen anything like this in history. So I really hope that we inspire you today to create your own story and join us on the journey. Janelle. Thank you, that was awesome. Um, I think kind of going on, on one comment from what you just said is your story is the differentiator, right? And so my background is a little bit different. Um, I started my company in 2014 after years of being in the mobile gaming industry and kind of startup world in corporate America. And my, I was always been fascinated on human behavior and why people do what they do. Why are people attracted, you know, to working with certain people and how do you recruit and retain employees and how do you build a brand or a product that people want to buy and remain loyal to. Um, and what I do is I actually tee up my clients to get to their stage. A lot of times before COVID, it was the stage. Um, in my book, I talk about a case, two, three case studies of uh, me getting the CMO up on stage for Dreamforce, which is the largest uh, software technology conference in the world. Um, and how do we get them there? And, and 
and it's a three-step process. And so it's kind of like I would tee my client up for Stacy, right? And then kind of launch it to go out there. Um, the methodology that you know, I can talk about today or that you can find is, you know, you have to understand what is your story, right? Who do I want to talk to? What is the message I want to say? What conversation do I want to have? And it's not the story of this is what I do. And this is the product I sell, or this is how I act, or this is my, my resume. It's the story of why I get up in the morning every day. And that's the piece, that's the emotional connection and journey that people are trying to find each other. Everyone wants to find a new tribe. And so I built this whole method and business around advocating and helping people, advising them to go all the way back to the beginning, ask the questions that are going to remind you of who you are and what makes you different, and then jump into this style. So it's story, and then you go into your style. And the style, a lot of times people think, oh, I fashion and, and I style people that way. But how you appear and what you wear is just a very small piece of it. Um, your style is how you communicate, even behind the screen, how my arms are moving, you know, what people see behind me. Like that is a style that people are naturally within a split second drawn to. And then that is where you launch your brand. That's where I get you under your spotlight, right? That's where you go to your stage. And that's where you can put together this, this kind of this truth of yourself, of your story. And then you can build trust with the kind of the style and how you hold yourself or how you present your interview or whatever it may be, or your audition. And then it's the loyalty. And that's where, that's kind of where you take that next stand. And it's like, you know, even with any actor or with, or with anyone um, that you meet or a leader or someone you've worked for, it's like, what do they stand for? And I'm going to remain loyal to it. You're not loyal to the company. You're not loyal to the product. You're loyal to those that you trust and you believe their truth and you will go to the end of the earth for them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I do. And I, I, um, I help others learn how to tell their own story. I guide them through a process and, you know, it's, it's the power of how you tell your story, who you tell your story to, um, that's going to, it's going to make you shine and make you different no matter what character you may go in or what company you interview for, who you lead. Every day you wake up and you say, what's my story today? And who am I talking to? What conversation do I want to have? Wow, that was very passionate. I, I love it. Um, I saw when um, I was doing all my homework, I came across a couple of quotes from both your websites that I thought was um, beautiful. And you kind of touched up on it, talking about what you do. Um, but it's about first impressions. And we all know uh, about first impressions from like the moment we walk in the door. It's not, it's, it's that fast. Um, but you made a statement that it's, on your video and and written on your website somewhere that it was 0.8 milliseconds for somebody to make an emotional decision about you when you walk in or about us Absolutely. when we walk in um we right. know that but the the issue in controlling that or that is um you know sometimes it just seems like a shot in the dark so why don't you describe what you do if you can in a nutshell without giving so much, um, well, in a nutshell, because otherwise yeah. you could go on for days and days and days. But how do you approach that to execute the, um, the desired um, target? Oh, right, you know, right. Well, client. yeah, and, and that, so this is kind of the geek out piece that I love. And, and I spoke at the, um, the uh, oh gosh, uh, it was uh, for fashion. Uh, now I can't remember, but it's on my website. Uh, what it is, is, is gray matter matters. So going into the brain, trying to understand what that first impression is and why we do it, even though all of our parents have told us that it's wrong and it's rude and it's judgmental and it's like, you know, vain and like all we do is judge people or whatnot. But what it really is, is going into the cerebral cortex and the limbic system. And if you think about it, when you go way back in time, first impressions were either fight or flight, right? We're in a tribe, like Stacy says, and you hear something, right? And you see something and it's all these different um, sensories and you know whether or not you need to run or help, right? You either go or run away. It's trust or threat. And so what I decided to do was, instead of just saying, what am I wearing or what am I talking about? You need to think about everything. How many steps do you have to walk up? Are you sitting down? Is it cold inside? Is there music, right? There's, there's all these different sensories that, with, sensories that within a split second, come together and they like you or they don't. We all know that. 
Someone yeah. walks up on stage and you're like, oh, I don't believe them. They don't know what the heck they're talking about. And they haven't opened their mouth. So if we can understand your D our DNA and our human behavior, we can understand how we make decisions to trust someone so that they'll mm -hmm. listen and believe us and stay loyal to a brand or you, you as your personal brand, we can, what I say, control the conversation. And like you said, control the outcome. What you can do is we can take someone on an emotional journey before you even speak. And by doing that, you can, you can find your tribe, but you also can engage someone and they don't know why, but they want to listen more. Um, and so that's, that's what I find so fascinating. How can we utilize what we already have, what we can't change and capitalize on that so that we can share our story authentically and real uh, and then kind of find success in, in where we want to go in our careers and our personal lives. Because if you think about it, you know, people, we all know this, we can either feel that they're, they're real or they're not, especially social media, right? Stacey, like how many times on these Instagram bloggers and you're like, that's not life. You know, like I could easily turn my computer and show this beautiful Sierra or a Shasta, which my friend let me COVID up here, or I can show you reality, right? Which is my dog, right? And there's, there's that authenticity to be like, she still knows what she's doing, but gosh, I relate to her. I get it. We're all in this together, just like masks. We're all in this together. You know, let's move forward and share our stories. Can you wow, give I love us that? Yeah, me too. Um, I was really into that, but like an example, a brief example of, because I'm guessing that you have, everybody is unique. Every moment is unique. So you have to, but what do you zero in on in those moments? Um, so you okay. can, okay. I don't want to say control so much, but um, so utilize. Let me give you the case. Yeah. Let me give you the case study that I did with uh, Salesforce and Adidas when they came out with the customizable shoes. Um, and I think this will kind of help you understand you know, how do you kind of create the story you want to have so you engage and have the outcome or conversation. Um, and it is truly a stage, right? 1.7 million viewers are live streaming to watch one woman walk three steps up onto a stage and talk about software and Adidas, right? And a lot of people think, and so what we did was we said, okay, this woman, Stephanie Buscemi, who's the CMO, we need to figure out what product she's selling, who's in her audience, what the demographic is, what's the story she's going to be talking about, right? And how do we kind of get them engaged and believe her within literally three steps? And so what we did was instead of focusing on the shoes, which that was not Stephanie, she's five feet tall. She hates flat shoes and runners, right? And she's going to stand next to Mark Benioff, who's 6'6". Six, six. Um, I said, do you trust me? Uh, I'll either get fired or not but we're going to take an old school Adidas dress and a skirt. We're going to hack it up, cut it, make sure there's three stripes, but we're going to do this because people in the audience, our target could afford an old school $60 outfit, not a beautiful, elegant, you know, $500 one. Nice. They could, they can go and they want to customize it. Right. They want to understand what Adidas is about and they wanted to learn more. And so what we did was we hacked it all up three hours before, um, I said, good luck to her. And she's like, I got you. I trust you. And she walked in those three steps. And within that, those three steps, actually within 30 seconds, 20,000 hits went to the Adidas website, trying to find the dress. Ah, oh, okay. wow. And the CEO wanted story. to talk to me afterwards, right, from Germany. And he's like, well, how did you do that? And I said, it's subconscious. But what they were actually doing is they wanted to buy the dress to feel the way they felt when they watched her walk on stage. Mm. And the Twitter feeds and the social media feeds came back saying, I want to be a boss like her. God, mm. Salesforce must be a great company to work for. And then <laughs> going beyond that, like for actors as well, we worked on how do you walk? How do you open up your hands? Where's mm. your mic? Mm. Right? Do you have things on your hands? Is it distracting? We walk through it over and over and over again so that you don't want people to see it. You want people to see them and the mm. audition or the speech or, or the, the content in which they're saying. And so the, in my book, or, you know, I can talk to you guys another time, that's, those are the three steps. The question is, you know, what's the story? What's me? So we stayed true to Stephanie on what she likes to wear, what gives her confidence, what she's speaking about. But then we geared it so that we controlled the conversation, the outcome, which ended up with a great relationship. Adidas and Salesforce did come in together with a great relationship uh, and it's stronger than ever. But, you know, how you did that was... Uh, 
subliminally within that split second. Mm. And again, Love you have it. to actually know what you're talking about after that, but, but, uh, but yeah. Wow. Um, I remember seeing pictures of the dress. I thought it was spectacular. <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's in the book too. and all the Twitter, Twitter feeds are in the book. And um, yeah, she did Ben and Jerry's the next day and we had to elevate uh, next year. We had to elevate that because she doesn't do tie dye. So you'll see that <laughs> picture. But but yeah, it was fun. It's, yeah. it's, you know, I have three I have three minutes to either be fired or get my job next year. So <laughs> it's fun. And that's funny you talk about she went to do Ben and Jerry's or did you say you did or she did? No, she the went, next oh. year she went up on stage and they did a relationship with Ben and Jerry. So there's tie dye oh. everywhere. Okay. Um, and so you'll see her outfit was totally different, but it was a different story where she was leading, not being a part of the, the product. So it was a different, uh -huh. yeah. Well, the that looking kind of resonates with your quote. Stacy, that's on your website is about building experiences that are impactful um, and that spread by word of mouth and, and you know, they, they become powerful like that, you know, so it sounds like all the elements, um, you know, from what you see, what you do, all these things create, um, stretch out into your sphere and create that uh, event in a sense. For, yes. for people and brands. So just trying to, I'm trying to keep it relatable to the audience here and sure. how they can utilize it. But, but, you know, this is your quote and I thought it was beautiful. So thanks. I mean, you know, that's a perfect segue into something that I wanted to share as a, um, a possible resource for this audience. And I just loved everything that Janelle said. What a great story. Um, it's such a great example of what you do and all the principles we're talking about. But um, Rosie, you and I both are fans of a woman who's an expert in this field as well, Sally Hogshead, and mm -hmm. her book, How to Fascinate. And she has a whole system for you to figure out your brand story and the specific archetypes and the specific types of ways that you're going to get people's attention. Um, one of the things I really picked up on that relates to this that Janelle said is, you know, being your authentic self. And I love how you know, the story going from the Adidas to the Ben and Jerry's, she's not a tie-dye person. It would have been inauthentic for her to put on a tie-dye just because she's with Ben and Jerry's. You know, anybody can do that. She, you really helped her find a thing that was authentic to her. And I think that uh, one of the things I learned from Sally Hogshead, and I definitely encourage you all to take her, she has a whole um, challenge that you go through to develop your personal brand. I'll share a different story. So I was helping my husband, who's a musician. His name is Mokai. Um, and he and I have very different styles. So until I read Sally Hogshead's book and took her course, it was a mystery to me why everything I was trying to do to help promote his music was failing. And that's because he's mystique and I'm passionate. So I'm out there passionately cheerleading for his music and <laughs> writing all these posts for him. And it's just so off brand for who he is. And we literally almost divorced over it. <laughs> the success story was we got Sally's book. And so I encourage everyone to really do some some searching in, in resources like that and find a way to show up authentically. And especially during this time that we're all going through of COVID, um, I was at the Word of Mouth Marketing Association conference when I met Sally and she presented this. And one of the other speakers there had a fascinating presentation about context. And her story was about how they took this master violinist who was world renowned and people would spend thousands of dollars just to get a ticket to see his show. And they put him in the subway in New York city and had him looking like he was, you know, fiddling for spare change. And literally people called the cops on him and told, you know, you've got to get this guy out of here. It's making all this noise. So context is so important. And when you put that person in the context of being respected, um, he gets respect. But if you put him in a subway station, even though he's the same proficient player, nobody's giving him the time of day and they're treating him like a vagrant, which is another issue that I, I have issue with. But the point is context is so important. And the other thing um, I wanted to circle back with uh, on what Janelle said is how to, you know, control the outcome. I would say that um, part of what you're doing on your social media profile is a really um, pragmatic thing that you can think about that it doesn't give you control. You definitely can't control things, but what you can do is paint a picture and go back to that feeling that you created for your client with the Salesforce presentation. You can do that every day with your social media, but only if you're strategic about it. You have to really think, who am I speaking to? 
what is it that I'm trying to promote? And I mean, I'm, I'm in the midst of a career transition myself right now. I'm really doing a bunch of self-discovery to figure out where I'm going. So I'm doing a lot more listening and very little speaking right now, um, especially because I'm, I'm very aware that this context is a very different context than we've been in. So I'm being very cautious. Uh, but I think that one of the things I would encourage you to do is go the other direction. And I've done this in the past. And we're doing it now in a way of using live video as a way to really find out what your audience wants. Maybe you're in a transition yourself. And uh, my favorite person who I'll point you to, who's a great resource for this, is uh, Molly Mahoney. She's reinvented herself as a, an app from an actress and a vocal coach to a business coach on live streaming and using chatbots and all this modern technology to really uh, develop products that you can market and, and develop yourself as a brand, develop a service offering through live video, really building this tribe. It's amazing. Go, go look at what she's done. The preparedperformer.com is, is her site. And she's just done a great job of teaching people how to use these social platforms to really help find that tribe, but also getting down to brass tacks of, of business. So if, if you're looking to start um, a different part of your career, launch a different aspect of you, um, check out her stuff. I've really benefited from it. I think there's a way that you can be authentic in this context and still do a lot of experimentation and not really control the outcome so much as paint that picture and give that feeling every time. So she has this model of, you know, just developing what are some keywords? I know, Rosie, you have some materials about this in your course, um, in your community that, that I've really been intrigued by and, and just coming up with a set of these are going to be the issues that I take a stand on, or these are going to be the keywords that I use frequently. These are going to reinforce the story and the value that I bring either to my clients or to a prospective talent buyer who's looking in on me as a possible actor. Um, and then, you know, write those things down, have a plan for yourself and revisit them often so that you're actually uh, carefully crafting the story that you have online and not letting it just sort of happen accidentally. Um, the other thing that you can do is, is go bounce ideas off friends or colleagues and, and really have them take a look, look at each other's social media profiles. What story is being told here, you know, and, and, and grade each other and, and do it semi often so that you're not just sort of accidentally creating your story. It's really easy to do on social media. You get passionate and put some stuff out there and like, wait, what did I just say? What, you know, or for me, I'm such an activist, I had to really kind of hone in on a few issues that I was going to focus on taking a stand on and not trying to take a stand on everything. So um, by being really strategic, I think you can paint that picture. And I hope that the feeling that I give everyone when they see one of my broadcasts or my posts is um, that you can be empowered, even in these crazy times. That's the impression that I always want to leave you with, is, um, is that, that I'm an empowered person and, and you can be too. And I think each of us has to decide what is that feeling we want to convey in the work that we do um, with our clients or if you're an actor, you know, there's, there's that certain feeling that you give people. And I think that's what they're buying when they buy talent. Yeah. I mean, I, just to, to kind of piggyback on what you said, there are two things, which is, um, you know, when you look at, I, I love the idea of doing more live video um, because people are, you know, again, you want to capture as much sensories as you can. So especially in acting, you know, people are going to see you move and you talk, but fine tuning what purpose, uh, what beliefs, what, <clears throat> um, what cause or whatever that you believe in and just staying to that, right? I remember I, I'm really into straws and turtles. I could do a lot of other things, but for me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to focus just on straws and turtles because you can empower others to do that if you stay focused. Mm -hmm. um, and so... The other thing that I do um, is I'll ask my client, all right, tell me about a leader or for you, maybe an, a, an artist that you really respect. And then I'll say, okay, give me three words that define him. Like I was saying Dustin Hoffman or whatever, but give me three words. And those three words are actually what you are looking for in yourself. That's, that's the tribe mm -hmm. you connect with, right? So right. Uh, I don't, you know, whatever it is. And so then from there, I'll say, okay, I want to take a look at your Instagram page. I want to take a look at LinkedIn. Is, are those the three words that are exuding? Is that the message, right? Like you're saying, is that the emotional feeling, gut feeling that you get when you look at your post? Every time you say something, every time you do a live video, does it hone in on those words or does it hone in on, you know, who you're going to stand for and um, the messaging that you want to have or the turtles and straws? It's funny you say that because um, there was one other uh, a brand strategist that was there in 2017 who wasn't able to participate on your panel. 
Um, but she was very specific to um, working with, with artists, actors, musicians. And um, she did, she, that was part of her exercise. Like, can you please um, pick three um, entertainers that you, you, th you, you admire? And then from those uh, list, the first three things that come to your brain about them that you admire about those particular ones. And I believe, I didn't sit in on it, but I believe uh, everybody who talked about it, they had this almost the same list for each person that they had written down. So with very similar oh. words. And, um, you know, in, in our, um, in our uh, uh, community, I floated around um, a PDF that helps it ask questions. I think I, I sent you a copy and it helps them to kind of narrow down um, these sort of, um, you know, it asks a question. I think there's seven of them. Um, and in those, that question, you can elaborate as much as you want, but then go back and review it and, and try and narrow down one word that describes that whole entire answer for yourself. And, um, and, and it's funny that you brought up Sally again because and your husband because I did the same thing. Someone gifted me this this questionnaire. Um, my uh, what was it um, archetype was passion and mystique. That's so funny because I think all our artists are more <laughs> mystique. <laughs> um, but uh, my husband was alert and power. So and I was doing a lot of his social you know um, content and. He was like, well, that's kind of wishy-washy. <laughs> <laughs> like his response was, um, I don't really like that. So I had to go, I, I was doing, I was picking music that was bold that I wouldn't pick. Um, pictures that really like shined a light on his truck or shined a light on the big, big units of, of equipment or, you know, like the fire that lit up the, the torch. <laughs> I'm like, is that better? And he goes, yeah, yeah that has more fire and, and it, you know, oh, and I go, oh, the, the grunt, there it is, the power, you know? And so, um, so anyway, you do, having to answer those questions and, and really figuring out um, internally who I was reflected a lot of m what my voice was. And I wasn't really, um, I didn't really realize that when I was just talking on the platform. <laughs> Now that I have that, and I did a few other um, uh, personality sort of um, questionnaires, and I narrowed it down, and I think, oh, okay, they all kind of align about in the same sort of group of, and, of types, and um, it helps me to understand myself better. So I think I'll just float those um, websites to you guys, and you can take a look. I think a couple of them are free, but some of them are paid, and and they're so worthwhile, you know, I think, in, in helping you to hone in on your voice. Um, but anyway, uh, going back to our conversation. Um, so if you were to give everybody like three, like really strong nuggets of how to step forward um, in their, uh, like in their voice to go further and take a deeper dive because of our whole entire situation, er I think it serves everybody to create a really strong digital personality. I guess that would be the word for it. Um, what, what nuggets would you give them to run with and play with? Stacey? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll, can you get, yeah, I'll just go on. Um, I, I think that listening is the first step and the tools that are out there uh, today that are lots of free tools, Hootsuite is, is the most well-known one of them in terms of social media listening, but you can put together a listening dashboard with some influencers in your space, some people that you aspire to have those similar career results um, or influencers that might lead you to discover new career opportunities. Maybe it's not in your space already, and then hashtags, um, I'm sure you all know by now, but a hashtag is just a word with a, the number sign in front of it and it lets you thread conversations. So you can set up listening dashboards to really figure out what that context is for the story that you're going to create. And I always recommend that people do quite a bit of that before jumping in. Really understanding who your audience is. Are you really creating this social media presence in order to attract talent buyers? Um, really think about I mean, Rosie, you schooled me on some of the changes that are happening as a result of COVID right now that are really real. 
I think some of the changes are, that are likely uh, on the horizon for the community of actors are going to be, you know, producers have less budgets and they're going to need the, the talent that they buy to have a greater social media presence. I'm a little bit familiar with this because I helped my husband with his music marketing and it's been that way for some time in the music industry, you know, a talent buyer in that industry is going to look at what is your social presence before they book you on certain bills. Um, even employers now are looking at people's social media presence before they hire. And when there's so much competition, you know, that's one of the things they're looking at. So just really understand who it is that you're trying to create this presence for. And if there are more than one audiences, and that's possible. Uh, my little sister reinvented herself from an actress into a corporate facilitation person. And, and she really discovered that she moved from New York to Hong Kong. And, and um, if you want to check out what she's done, it's Natalie Facilitation. Um, she really has figured out how to reinvent herself for that specific audience. But then she has, uh, I have other social profiles that, that I don't really share out publicly where I kind of really lean in more to the politics and into the music marketing. Um, so you can do that. You can create separate Twitter profiles, separate Instagram profiles to really play out parts of your personality. But I think Janelle, you and I had a similar story where we, we, we consolidated some of ours and it's a lot of work to maintain these profiles. So do you think about it strategically? And I would encourage you to really find that personality that is going to be your voice or your type. I mean, one of the speakers on the panel from 2017 um, talked about uh, Don Brody, uh, Trailer Trash. Um, what's the name of our series? Trailer Trash. Oh, I remember the Trailer Trash. <laughs> but it's, it's a comedy series uh, <laughs> done in Van Nuys. And, you know, really different. You know, instead of hiding from her Trailer Trash uh, abode, she leaned into it and made herself really fascinating and very different than some of the other talent down there. So um, I think that no matter what your circumstance is, if you're clear that it's who you are and you like who that is, and you'd like to keep being that person, even if you're talking to different audiences, you can bring it all together into one profile and not have to split it up like that. But th those are some options, especially as you're discovering who you really want to be in the story that you want to tell online. And then finally, I'll add that um, using the live video and really asking people, what problem can I help you solve? Um, if you're looking at marketing yourself as an actor for talent buyers, um, this might be an unusual exercise. It's more of the kind of thing that we do in direct marketing as consultants, what problem am I helping you solve? But I think this is an unprecedented opportunity to start thinking more entrepreneurial about your acting career because each and every one of those talent buyers and producers are being hit with a whole new set of problems that they didn't have yesterday. So you can position yourself right there uh, with content that, that addresses directly those problems with some of these tools, especially listening and live video, and really leapfrog a lot of the competition who may not be thinking in an entrepreneurial way. They may still be thinking in the old way of how you used to build your acting career before. And, and there were some powerful examples shared in, in that 2017 panel that I hope you'll, you'll repurpose, Rosie, because some of them mm -hmm. really told the story of actors that were more famous, but they didn't build their social media presence, and now they're having a harder time uh, pitching those actors if they're talent reps. So those are some things to think about. You know, listen a lot, look at the context, really know who you're talking to, and uh, look for opportunities to pivot in your career and solve problems for the people that you have in your audience. No, that's, that's Thank you. great. I and like, again, I said in the beginning, I go a little bit further back um, to get you to where Stacey's talking, which is how do you find your story, right? How do you discover um, you know, what you stand for and how, where do you start? Um, there's many different things. I think right now, given that um, just where we are, go back to kind of, if I asked you that question and said, tell me your story in three sentences or less, if you can't answer that, then you need to go take some time. And some, when I was trying to figure out my, my professional brand, I realized I needed a personal brand because those two things are the same. They, they're, they're completely intertwined, especially with COVID. Now we're behind the screen. You know, you see all these like, you know, as you can tell, I've been doing a full 360 as the sun's been coming. I don't know if anyone's noticed. I'm like, <laughs> right, and I'm like, oh my God, it's not working. Um, anyway, but that's, you know, that's part of this, this story that we tell right now. Ask those you are closest to. If you had to tell who I am in three sentences or less, what is it? Because you're immediately finding out the, the story that you're telling, that you don't know you're telling. Mm. And that also goes to asking your friends or colleagues or whoever and say, okay, what is a friend, right? 
what does a friend mean to you? Or how, you know, what are words that describe a friend? And you're not asking them like, why are you friends with me? But you're saying, what are some, you know, friend, you know, like, oh, loyal or energetic or whatever it is. And what you're finding is your tribe is going to describe you without them thinking they're describing you. Because if you ask them to explain it, say, what do you think of me? They're going to be too nice. They're going to tell you whimsical, right? They're going to say, oh, you know, you know, Rosie, if you ask me, I would not say those words about you. I would use tenacious, right? I would use, I would use like, you know, and I might not use those words on the chart, but like I would use such different words and that's fascinating. Do you uh-huh. take in the tribe, you listen like Stacy said, um, you go back and if you can't write your story in three sentences, then you need to fit, start there and you need to go back to everything. Um, and take a look at all your behavior, right? Even look at, you know, what do you look at on social media? Why do you look at that? What are you attracted to? Because that's telling you where your gut and your natural instincts are going to. You know, um, Simon Sinek is one of my favorite. He wrote, you know, Power of Why and all those things. And there's so many things you say out there, which is, you know, there's your story and your purpose, and then there's your value and your vision. Your story and your purpose was, it was created and it's in you since childhood, right? It is in you since childhood. In my book, I talk about the fact I grew up with a mom with a terminal disease. I grew up having to put on clothes in order to chameleon into a situation, whether, it, you know, reading with you, she's sick or not, hospital or not, shopping at Goodwill. I needed to learn how to navigate and, and to, to survive, which now then ultimately got me to where JD is, which is how do I control the conversation when I don't feel in control, right? And my purpose is to give permission to others to say, you can empower with your own story, even if you feel it's a tragedy, it's not, because it's not yours anymore, but the purpose behind it is still your same purpose. The values and the vision is what comes from that. And as Stacy says, you're pivoting. We are all forced to pivot right now, all of us. We have no choice with COVID. So if you say, okay, I still value or I value this or I value that, but what's my vision? It's gotta shift. People are looking for others to find a vision with them. And that's where every single one of us here could do that for other people, right? can do that for another tribe because it's like, we're going to, I'm going to find my three sentence story. Now I know what I value. Now I see what people value in a friend, what people value in on Instagram, whatever it may be. And now I'm going to go out there and I'm going to create a new vision for myself, but I'm actually creating it beyond myself. Right. I'm creating it so that others will follow and want to engage with me. Maybe it's to get a job. Maybe it's to get a new acting, whatever, whatever it may be. Cause the end goal is not profit. The end goal is to remain true to your purpose because Uh profit comes after that got it that's beautiful i love that (laughs) i read it somewhere just kidding (laughs) (laughs) but that's true um oh my god uh, it's so hot okay i'm gonna keep moving here okay (laughs) so um for us um we're we're gonna be able to uh continue the converse be able to continue our conversation on a slack channel so if we have if any of you guys have questions about this um i'll send you the video you can watch it again um if you have questions you can ask them directly they'll be our guests on the slack channel um i sent you a pdf you can um go through that and and take the next week to carve out your story um and so forth and then come back and ask questions so it'll be open our slack channel which is a pretty much a workspace um, is going to be open to the end of the month. And then after that, we'll shut it down, reopen it for next month. But for anybody else who's watching our, um, the video, who'd like to get a hold of you, how would they get a hold of you, Stacy, if they wanted to reach out to you? What's the best platform to get a hold of you? And then Janelle, would you tell us what's the best way to get a hold of you? Well, I ebb and flow through different social platforms, uh, depending on what I'm, I'm going through at the moment. So what I always do is give out my website, and that's uh, stacydepolo.com, S-T-A-C-E-Y-D-E-P-O-L-O.com. And there you'll find uh, my handles on most of the social networks are S Depolo, a little bit different on Facebook, but I'm hardly there these days. Uh, but whatever I'm doing lately, it'll, it'll be listed on the website. And I do encourage everyone to do that. Get your own domain. Don't... Uh, don't give everything over to Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a good one. I like that one. I might have to take that for my next podcast. Um, yeah, you know, actually really quickly, saying what Stacy said, um, my name, my business is actually, like you said, it's my first and middle name. And I did that on, uh, on purpose because there's only one me 
uh, my main name, my married name, that's other people. So that's important for me to be not uh, true to myself. Um, so you can reach me uh, at my website, JanelleDiane.com. Um, it's spelled differently, so uh, make sure you check the spelling. Um, and I actually my own Audible, so you can listen to my own stories. There's more stories in there. My entire book is told through stories. Um, you'll learn about my 18 years of dancing and why I love the stage and how you do all that. Um, and then Twitter, you know, is Janelle Diane. Everything is Janelle Diane. Um, and so you can reach out to me there or email. I mean, with all of you out there, stories are probably, Stacey as well, stories motivate us to do what we do. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you want any, you know, couple minutes just to say, all right, give me your three sentences and I'll break that down for you. I'm more than willing to listen to, to, uh, to what your story is and, and ways we can help. Well, thank yeah. you very much. I very much appreciative of everybody's time. Um, and we did it in an hour. Fantastic. I'm amazed. I can't wait to continue this on Slack. Yeah. I haven't jumped on yet, but I will. I hope to. Yeah, to I'll talk jump on to too.